The two most insufferable obstructionist senators you know, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, obviously, are coping and seething really hard after Kamala Harris detailed her plan to codify abortion rights, saying, quote, I think we should eliminate the filibuster for Roe and get us to the point where 51 votes would be what we need to actually put back in law the protections for reproductive freedom and for the ability of every person and every woman to make decisions about their own body and not have their government tell them what to do. And that right there is a perfectly reasonable position that I expected her to take, given that she has previously vocalized support for exceptions to the filibuster. Now, the reason why you have to do this, obviously, is that you can't pass anything unless you subvert Republican obstruction by doing away with the filibuster or carving out exceptions to it. Even if you brought back the talking filibuster, that would be better. But since there's been no reform, largely thanks to Manchin and Cinema, well, Biden wasn't able to accomplish a lot of what he wanted to accomplish. Now, you can say that Biden did not fight them hard enough, and I would agree with that. But at the end of the day, they were the two obstructionists that basically blocked a lot of transformative changes that could have happened, but didn't because of them. Now, of course, both Manchin and Cinema, who refused to make exceptions to the filibuster, even for voting rights, mind you, are now unsurprisingly mad at Harris for saying the most reasonable thing ever. And they've actually come out of hiding to uh, denounce Harris for doing what the American people want her to do if she's elected. Kirsten Sinema, for example, tweeted, to state the surprisingly obvious, eliminating the filibuster to codify Roe v. Wade also enables a future Congress to ban all abortion nationwide. What an absolutely terrible short-sighted idea. Hey, dumbass, I've got some news for you. They're going to try to do that anyway. Let me remind you that when Donald Trump was president, he called for the filibuster to be killed, writing on Twitter at the time, the very outdated filibuster must go. Budget reconciliation is killing ours in Senate. Mitch M. Go to 51 votes now and win. It's time. He also tweeted, Republicans in the Senate will never win if they don't go to a 51 vote majority now. They look like fools and are just wasting time. But don't you worry, because according to Kirsten Cinema, a genius, obviously, Trump and the Republicans won't actually kill the filibuster when they have power so long as Democrats do the honorable thing and uphold that esteemed tradition of keeping the filibuster. This is delusional. They are going to kill the filibuster and ban abortion nationwide anyway at the first chance that they get. So you have no reason to unilaterally disarm in hopes that Republicans will do the same for purposes of looking fair, I guess. Does she not remember how Mitch McConnell refused to even hold a hearing for Obama's Supreme Court nominee back in 2016 after Scalia died, saying that, you know, we don't confirm justices in election years, even though we've done that before, because we need to let the American people decide. So he created this entirely new standard. And then guess what happened? Four years later, when Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, he then rushed through the confirmation of Amy Coney Barrett, Trump's nominee, doing away with this new standard that he created four years earlier. This is how Republicans operate. They have no principles. Their only principle is fuck you. And this mentality from idiots like Kirsten Cinema is embarrassingly naive. And this antiquated way of thinking is exactly how she cooked her own fucking career. It's why she's being forced into an early retirement from the Senate, although I'm sure that she's going to do even better as a Wall Street lobbyist. But the point is that the Democratic Party's base has adapted to this new hyperpartisan reality of American politics. And any politician who doesn't recalibrate and adapt with them will be left behind, with her and Manchin being prime examples of that. But but on the subject of Manchin, he was even more hysterical than cinema. And I say this because CNN's Manu Raju reports, Joe Manchin, a staunch defender of the filibuster, tells us he won't endorse Kamala Harris now over her vow to gut the filibuster to codify Roe. Oh no, shame on her, Manchin, who is retiring at year's end, said in the Capitol. She knows the filibuster is the holy grail of democracy. Shut the fuck up. It's the only thing that keeps us talking and working together. If she gets rid of that, then this would be the house on steroids. Now that Harris has vowed to gut the filibuster on this issue, Manchin said he wouldn't back her for president. Quote, that ain't going to happen, he said. I think that basically can destroy our country, and my country is more important to me than any one person or any one person's ideology. I think it's the most horrible thing. Well, boo fucking who. But I'm sure that, you know, she's totally toast after losing the coveted Joe Manchin endorsement because, you know, I'm sure that that is uh, something that is really important in 2024 American politics, Joe Manchin's endorsement. He really has an inflated ego, doesn't he? <laughs> Dunning-Kruger in action. You know, it's amazing to me that he's calling 
the filibuster, the holy grail of democracy, when it is an antiquated rule used by racist senators to uphold slavery and segregation. But putting aside the racist history of the filibuster, the Senate is an inherently undemocratic institution. It gives elected officials elected by a minority of Americans outsized power over the entire country, and the filibuster gives them even more power than they already have. It is quintessential tyranny of the minority. So no, the filibuster is not the fucking holy grail of democracy, you moron. It is antithetical to democracy. But let's cut the bullshit. Manchin doesn't support the filibuster because he thinks that it's the holy grail of democracy or because he thinks it's going to destroy the country if it goes away. He supports the filibuster because it allows him and other corrupt politicians to more effectively serve their donors. And I say this because in June of 2021, The Intercept actually obtained leaked audio of Joe Manchin scheming with his billionaire buddies about ways to save the filibuster as opposition to it grew when Biden was pushing for Build Back Better, which included a lot of progressive policies that would have helped Americans, but they would have also negatively affected the bottom line of Manchin's billionaire buddies on that call, like Louis Bacon, chief executive of More Capital Management, Kenneth D. Tuchman, founder of global outsourcing company Teletech, Howard Marks, the head of Oak Tree Capital, one of the largest private equity firms in the country, and a participant from Tudor Investment Corporation, the hedge fund founded by billionaire Paul Tudor Jones. But he's not going to admit that the filibuster is needed to better serve capital, so he's instead choosing to grandstand about democracy as if anyone believes the bullshit that he's selling, especially after he specifically literally chose to prioritize the filibuster, a Senate rule over democracy itself by not making an exception to voting rights legislation after Trump tried to steal the last election. So spare me the bullshit, Manchin. None of us are buying it. But it's not surprising to see Manchin and Mo come out of the woodwork to cry about Harris committing to do something that should have been done a long time ago, because these are the main obstructionists for Biden's agenda back in 2020 and 2021 and 2022. But it's got to sting a little bit more for them because they're on their way out. So, you know, there's nothing that they can do to save the filibuster once they're gone. I mean, they can try to lobby Congress, I guess, their former colleagues after they're inevitably hired by some Wall Street firm. But that's not the same as being a senator. They're not going to be as effective at saving the filibuster as lobbyists as they were as senators. So I hope it does happen and I hope to see them cry. And I look forward to drinking their delicious salty tears. Were you acting like a...